Hey guys, hello and welcome to another installment in our tutorial series where we're covering replicating the design of the Abercrombie and Fitch site by building out Divi Engine and Fitch. Now last week we looked at building out the perfect product page for your Divi Engine and Fitch site. And what we're gonna be doing this week is we're gonna be looking at building out the archive pages or the category pages for your site. And then we're also gonna be building out a My Account page. Now we'll see that some of the features we can't replicate with the stock install of Divi, but we're gonna show you some great features in body commerce that you can utilize to build that perfect site but without wondering or stressing about it too much, we're still gonna be building something that looks fantastic using only Divi and no additional plugins. So without further ado, let's start by taking a look at the Abercrombie & Fitch category page. Okay, so when we look at the Abercrombie and Fitch site here and their category page, you can see that it's a relatively simple layout where they have these new tags in, in uh, WooCommerce, those will probably be sale tags. And with different extensions in BodyCommerce, for example, you can have custom tags for these um, different, different uh, products, but you can also add things like this sidebar where you've got this filtering system where you've got different sizes, you can say the different categories. And um, yeah, I'll just actually click over here. And this is a feature of body commerce called our Ajax filters, where you can, you know, control different, um, you know, the colors that you're selecting with, the materials, the tags, the origin country, and all these, what these really are, are different attributes and categories for the products. And you can search them live, you can do all sorts of stuff, price ranges and so forth. But unfortunately, Divi doesn't do that for us. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna build out this part of this Abercrombie and Fit site. So let's get to it and get started. Okay, so to get the ball rolling here with building out these category pages, we need to be in the back end of our Divi site. We're gonna run over to the theme builder. So we go to Divi, theme builder, and here we'll see that header and the footer we completed in one of the previous steps in the tutorial series, as well as that product page we built last week. So to get started, we're gonna click on add new template. We're gonna scroll down to the product session and then we're gonna go all products, category pages, and where are we? Um, there we go, all product category pages. So we're gonna check that box and then we're gonna say create new. Now again, just as we did before, we're gonna click on the build a custom body here and that's gonna take us into the theme builder and this blank space. Now we're gonna be doing something that we did before. We're gonna build out this little breadcrumbs top section here, and that is pretty easy to do. So let's start with that. So we're gonna start with this first section that we'll add, and it's gonna be a single column row. We are not gonna add a module just yet, so we'll skip that. We'll just first finish the settings of this guy. We're gonna go to design, we're gonna go to sizing, and we're gonna give it 100% width. And then we'll also do the max width to the 2560 pixels. And then we're gonna want to change the spacing just a little bit. I'm gonna add some top padding of 10 pixels. And that should be good for that. Um, one thing we wanna do also is here on the section, we're gonna to go to design, spacing, and then for the top padding, we wanna make sure that that is zero pixels, just so that this fits nice and snug right at the top of our page here. And um, next thing we'll do is just add the bright, oh, actually before we do that, we just need to give our header that gray color. So we're gonna go design, oh actually no, sorry, content background, background color, but we can just click the gray color here. And then we just want to, I noticed that I forgot to put the bottom panning in. So let's just link these two up. And now we've got that width that we want and like for this. So we're gonna continue now. We're gonna add the breadcrumbs module. There we go. And that pops that in there very easily and quickly. And then we just wanna, like we did before, we wanna change that spacer to be the arrow. 
And then we're going to go over to the background. We already did all white. We're going to go to design. We're going to go to the text. And we're just going to make that text light. I think that looks a little bit better. And we want to add some spacing here as well. So we're going to go to spacing. And just to give it that same spacing, well, not the same, but a little bit closer to that is to go to our padding. Once again, we'll first top bottom padding. We'll make zero. Nice, that makes it nice and tight. And then we're gonna just add left padding of 5% to give it that slight indent over there. And just as quick as that, we've got that top little bit figured out yet again. And if we go here to one of our product pages by clicking on that, now we can see that we've got kind of the similar jam happening here with our little breadcrumbs portion. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we will be adding another single column row because we want to add this title for the category. So we'll add just a text module, put in text. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use another feature in Divi that is maybe a year or two old now, but it's a dynamic content feature. And again, just how you do that is you delete what is ever is in this pre-filled field. You click on this plus, and then you're gonna go with post archive title. Now with that in there, all we need to do is we go to the design section, and we kind of have to assign it the fonts a little bit more explicitly because you can't go and, and be a little bit more um, ambiguous about it with those default settings that we have, but it's not a big deal. It's easy to get in there. We want to make sure that we set the color to our blue color. And then we're going to increase that size just a tiny little bit. And we'll add some spacing as well, I think, um, just to give it a little bit more room at the top there. So we go spacing. We're going to say padding 50 pixels, I think, should be good. Gives it a little bit of room from up there. And that's pretty much it. So this will also be your category description, not your post description. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go ahead and add another text module. Get that in there. And then just like before, we're gonna delete this text that's in there. And we're gonna click on the dynamic content button. And then what we need to do is just go down for the category description, which is this one. It'll kind of pop in some dummy text in there for you. And all we need to do here is we're just gonna go to the design. We'll change the text to be light. And then we'll just also make sure that the color is blue here. And that should be good. So now we've got two of the bigger elements done. And next up, we just need to add the actual body of the products. Okay, so let's pick things up where we left them off. Adding the section for the um, products is gonna be super easy. We just need to add another row. It's gonna be a single column row. And then all we need to do is add in a shop module. So we just type in shop. Now, there's been a Divi update, and I should just mention this, that if you're on the latest version of Divi, it might be the Woo products module. So it depends on the version you're using. I'm using the one that I started this tutorial with. But just so that you know that there is another module name now for this called Woo products. So in this one, we'll use shop, but just for your information. But the settings inside will look pretty much exactly the same as it did previously. So just be aware of that and um, don't be confused when you run into this. Now, the way that we make sure that we're just showing the products for this category or the category that the user clicked on is we just have to tell it use current page. And that's going to pull only the products from the category that we're in. We're also going to change the product count to be six. And we're gonna change the layout to be three columns. So we have a, a, a two by three grid essentially on every page for our products. And um, we can add the elements here and we can say show pagination. 
And then you'll see at the bottom here, it creates this section here. So if you have more than six products, you can page through them. Now, an interesting feature that you can get with body commerce, um, for example, is that you can style this pagination or you can even have an infinite scroll version of pagination. You just keep scrolling down and down and down. Um, it's a pretty cool feature. It just makes this look a little bit more professional, a little bit more polished. And I love Divi, but it makes it look that little less Divi-like um, because Divi sites definitely have a look to them that lets you know it was a Divi site. Anyway, I digress. Done this part. Now, all we need to do is style it a little bit. We're going to change this overlay icon to not be visible. So there, it's gone. And then we're going to lighten that overlay a little bit by selecting white. But then we're going to make the opacity about 20%. So let's just go down to 20. And now you see that when you go over, it just gives that, makes it that little bit duller. And if you look at what they do here, it's the same effect of just dulling it out just that tiny little bit. Um, so next up, we just want to make sure that we check the text to be correct. So we're going to change the title text. We're going to make that text weight light. And we are going to give it the blue color, which it should do by default, but doesn't hurt to double check. Um, we're going to go over to price. And we're going to tell it to use um, just a blue color for the price also. There we go. You see it got that a little bit darker in there. And then that should be all good for this portion. So you can kind of see it's got a similar look and feel to this, um, they have an extra field for the tags and things like that. Um, with Divi Body Commerce, again, you can create your own loops for this section where you can add all sorts of cool stuff on it. But if we're working with stock Divi, this is about as close as we're gonna get um, without adding a bunch of custom code. But it looks good. I think it's very functional. And you know, you can think of other ways that you can make it look even better. But you know, if we're doing the Abercrombie thing, this is how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna save this really quickly. And then we're gonna see on the front end what, what this looks like. So let's close this out. And remember that important step, every time you add a new template, layout in the theme builder you have to save it up here also otherwise you're going to lose all your work so let's go here and let's say visit site and we are loading okay so let's click on men's for example and here we've got it saying men's right there we've got all this info down here if we go let's say maybe female shirts that's popping in over here now, if you had a description for this category, it'd be displaying right underneath there with that dynamic module that we added for the dynamic content. But that looks pretty good. So I think we're all done with this portion. So next up, we're going to start building out the My Account Page section. Okay, so this is going to be interesting as we don't have an account with the Abercrombie and Fitch site. So I kind of envision this account page that kind of fits into the overall design with um, that site. So we just gonna put a nice header up here. We're gonna use the WooCommerce shortcode to go ahead and build out the My Account information. We'll just style that a little bit. And then we just added this little new arrival section as well, which you might recognize from the home page here. We scroll down, which is gonna be very, very similar to that right into our theme builder. So let's click on over um, and just to finish the overview here, we're going to add these products on there and this will just be the latest additions to the site. So let's go back to the theme builder here and we're going to add another template. We're going to go down to WooCommerce pages and we're going to select my account and say create new template and then we'll add the custom body, we'll build the custom body. Alrighty, so now the way we're gonna do this is we're just gonna add another single column row. We're gonna add a text module because we're adding that my account text to the page. And then what we're gonna wanna do also is just type that in there. It does not know that automatically. There we go. We'll go over and Maybe we'll just add that as H1. 
There we go. H1. There we are. That makes it a header tag one. And then we can just go here to the heading text. We have H1 selected. Now, if you decided to go with H2, H3, H4, or whatever, you'll just have to select the appropriate um, tag here. So we're going to make this bold. And then we'll increase the size to, I don't know, 51 maybe. 51 is looking good to me. And it's already the blue color because we previously designated all headings to be our blue color. And we'll say that's cool. And let's just change the section background color to be that off gray color for the entirety of this page. And I think that'll look nice. And then we need to add a, another section here to get this white background. I'm using a section for that. So we'll just add well, a section, I, I mean a row. Let's add the row there. Single column row again. We'll add a text module. And this is where we will be putting our short code that is actually native in WooCommerce. And you can find all the short codes for WooCommerce on a link that we'll put in the tutorial. But for the actual my account section, it's just WooCommerce underscore my underscore account. And that pops that out. That looks pretty horrible, to be honest, but we're going to fix that right now. Let's, before we tackle that, let's quickly fix this row. So for the row, we're going to give it a background color of white, just pure white. And for the design, we're going to add a little bit of spacing. So let's add some padding top and bottom, maybe 25 for top and bottom. And then I'd say 50 for left and right. Okay. And we're going to give it a little bit more interesting border here by giving a pixel rounding of five. And we'll give it a box shadow of just this punchy box. And as you can see, we're kind of most of the way there. And we'll, we're, we're happy with that, so we'll say okay. And now we're going to tackle the text generated by the short code. Now, as you know, normally you would just go in there and change everything one by one. We can't do that. So if we go to the text section here, this is an unordered list with bullets. So we can click on this. And what we can do is we can say, okay, we'll make that all capitalized. That looks better. And we can go further and we can say, well, let's give our text blue color. But oh no, nothing happens, right? Well, let me show you why. This is, those are actually links. So we, you need to select the link and then you make it blue. And now you see all the link text has changed. Now, if I go further and um, we maybe want to get rid of those bullets, I think. We'll go back to the unordered list. And then we can go down to the actual unordered list style, which is right here. And we just say none. And boom, now those are gone also. We're looking good so far. Let's go ahead and edit the link text again, though. Let's make that bold. That looks okay. And then we're also going to boost the size of that text just a little bit to be maybe 21. No. I don't think we'll do that. We're going to bounce that back. We're going to actually just change the list text size to be 21. There we go. But they're a little close to each other right now. So I'm going to add a little bit of list line height. Let's say 1.5 EM. Yeah, that's all right. That looks good. Perfect. And that's pretty much that. Now, you'll notice that this is on the bottom here, um, this welcome section will actually pop over to the right-hand side on the, once we've saved and refreshed the page. So let's do that really quick. We'll save that. We'll close this. And golden rule, we save any new templates that we put in here. And we'll go to the front end of our site. And let's click on my account and see what happens. All right, and there we have it. And as promised, here is the welcome text on the right-hand side. It looks very close to this one. This one has, still has the downloads in here, but in the beginning of our tutorial, we removed that endpoint. So that's looking very good so far. 
And the last thing we need to do is you'll notice that we've got the footer in here. And I don't really see the point for having the footer on the My Account page. We want the user to be able to navigate the site, which is this up here, and then navigate their My Account section. So the way we remove that is very simple. We just go back to the theme builder and we just simply disable or hide the footer um, by clicking the button here. Of course, we save once again. And now we come and refresh this it will be gone. And now, of course, we're gonna put that new arrival section right below that, and that would be super easy to do. So back to our theme builder, we're gonna edit the body again for the My Account section. Okay, and now that we're in here, we will add yet another single column row and a text module. And the text that I'm gonna want in here, we'll put as, um, new arrivals dash see what oops see what is hot and I want to italicize the second part of that and I want to bold the first okay that's looking pretty decent and maybe what I'll do is I'll wrap all of that in a h2 tag just to create a heading still, but one that is a little smaller than the other one. And since we're working with heading text, it's H2. We just go ahead and we center that right there. And that looks great. So last thing we need to do is add another shop module. And again, if you're using the latest version of Divi, this might be the Woo products module, but we're doing, doing it with the shop module on an older version just because we started with that, we don't want to confuse you guys. We are going to select it from the list, latest products. And we don't need to set current page like we did for the archive page section. All we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a product count. We only want four products here. We don't want it to show anything else. And we won't be turning anything on like pagination or anything like that. We're gonna keep it just like that. As far as content goes, however, we are going to want to um, just um, change that overlay as we did before. So we're gonna go overlay, we're gonna hide that icon, and then we're just gonna change the opacity of this white color to be 20%. Oh, there we go, 20%. Now we've got that very, very light overlay for the opacity, and I think that looks pretty great. So now what we're doing is we're incentivizing users to maybe add some more products to their cart or check out other stuff that we sell on our site just by visiting the page over here. So it's a great way to get people a little bit more engaged um, and you know you wanna upsell when you can and this is a good opportunity to do so. And that's pretty much it for this portion of the tutorial series. And guess what guys, we're basically almost done with building. So in conclusion, I just want to thank you guys for sticking with us so far. Um, th this is slated as a Black Friday series, but this, you will find benefit in this anytime you participate. So definitely stoked to have you guys on board. Definitely comment in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Just make sure that you, that you do not miss anything. We're posting other tutorials all the time on the Divi Engine website. And definitely think about ways you can use body commerce because with body commerce, you can actually have features where you can build out this entire My Account section in a much cleaner, styled way. You can have accordions up here for your different account menu links and stuff like that. It really is a tool that helps you leverage the power of WooCommerce and Divi. And with that, guys, this is Roby from the Divi Engine team. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Yeah.